Okay, let's talk about cascading style sheets and the syntax of an external style sheet. Now, in this top line, what I've got is the HTML element body. That is a selector. I am selecting that element for treatment. What follows is the declaration. The declaration is enclosed within curly brackets. I have two attributes that I am setting in this declaration. The first one is background color and I'm setting the background color to beige. The second one is the text color or color, and I'm setting that to navy. Now, the syntax, once again, is a little bit different than what we've used in HTML. In this case, we would say color colon navy and background hyphen color colon beige. Both statements end with a semicolon. Okay? So, any element pretty much can be a selector, but we're not limited to just HTML elements. If we move down a bit, and I move past it, there we go. This is an ID selector. ID selectors are user defined. You and I create our own, and they begin with the pound sign or hash mark. In this case, I've called mine P1. That's the selector, an ID selector. This is the declaration. I'm setting my text align to center. I'm changing my font size to 18 point, changing the font family to cursive, and changing the color to saddle brown. So let's just make sure we've saved that out. And let's go over to our web page and see how we activate this ID selector. And here it is. We simply go into, in this case, the paragraph opening paragraph tag for the first paragraph. And I added ID equals, quote, P1, end quote. Now let's save that just to make sure. And refresh. And there we go. Now, notice that my default text color is still blue. But my first verse of the song is very stylized. Each line is centered and it's in a fancier typeface than the rest. In fact, that looks pretty good. I think I'll just go ahead and change everything, all of my verses, to look like that. Go ahead and give this a try. Create your own ID selector and apply it to your practice page. And next time, we'll talk about class selectors.